This Toronto man has filed a complaint with the government about why it refused to provide him special accommodation. Andrew Gerzad lives with cerebral palsy, and he says he was denied assistance at a Toronto passport office when he requested help filling out forms. Passport Canada says staff aren't allowed to fill out forms, and there's no exemption for those with disabilities. And Andrew Gerza is with me in the studio. Andrew, nice to see you. Hi, thank you. So, t so tell us what happened. So you went to the Passport Canada office, and and you you went up to an agent, and what did you say? And I just said, hi, I'd like to renew my passport, please. I need a form, and I need help to do that. And I was immediately told, okay, we don't provide that service. You're going to need someone else to help you. And what, what, like who? That's kind of what I said. I was like, okay, so there's no one else here. And I just taken a wheel trans down. I booked up half the morning off to be here mm -hmm. to do this. I was trying to explain to the agent that there was no one. There was, I was here alone and I had done all this work to get here. And who's going to help me? And so tell us why you need assistance. Because I have cerebral palsy and I'm unable to write legibly on mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. So I type everything. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I access the world, it's through typing. And so while there's an online form, I don't have access to a printer. And even if I was to print it, I can't hold on to the paper. So that doesn't work. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go down and just speak to an agent because they'll help me. That should be no problem. And then I was surprised when I wasn't given that, that service. So basically all you were asking was for someone to say you were going to verbally tell them all of your information and you just wanted them to just write it down yeah, for you, right? Yeah, that's literally all I wanted. And so what did, when you explained that to them, what did they say to you? They just again said, no, we don't provide that service and you're going to have to find somebody else to help you. And I was handed a paper form and I, I left because I just said, okay, well, you're not going to help me. And I was upset now and I was mm -hmm. annoyed mm -hmm. that I had spent half my morning doing that. So I waited for another wheel trans, 45 minutes, and went home and had my care worker at home, who's only available at my house, fill out the form with me. So why, did they give you any explanation as to why they wouldn't do that for you at the passport office? No, I was just told from the agent, no, nope, that's not what we offer. Here's your form, bye. Okay, so how did that make you feel and what are you doing about it? I was annoyed, yeah. so I started talking about it and started saying, like, this is not right, this is unfair, this is definitely ableism um, mm -hmm. on the part of, the, of, of Passport Canada. And I just, I really just want them to know that it, it hurt because it took me, I did get my passport filed and I went and I, I took care of it at home and I went to Canada Post and, and filed the form, but mm -hmm. it took me an extra two or three hours to do all of that than had they just helped me right there. And so, uh, have you encountered this kind of thing before, or did it surprise you that they that they just obviously it surprised you, or you wouldn't have gone down to the office in the first place, yeah. right? I, w I was very surprised. I assumed because it was a government document, and I assumed because I was going there on my own, and they can see that I'm very visibly disabled. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them right away from the beginning as I rolled up, I will need your help. I was being very clear about what I wanted. I assumed that just by asking for help, I would get when I needed and when I didn't, I was very surprised and very dismayed. So what do you think is going on here? I think they're concerned about liability. I think they don't want, I think there's concerns about privacy and I understand that, mm -hmm. but the same issues arise when I went home and had to ask my care worker to also fill out the information. There's risk no matter what. So what they need to do is provide services like a computer in the terminal where mm -hmm. they could say to me, well, oh, you can't write? Okay, look, there's a computer over here. Mm -hmm. You can fill it out. You can print off your form and hand it to me at the end, and then we're done. They don't provide any services like that in passport offices, so somebody mm -hmm. with a severe disability is left without. So are you going to do anything else? I mean, you're obviously you're speaking out about this now, but is there anything else that you're going to do in terms of lodging a formal complaint or is or anything like I, that? I have considered talking yeah. to, the, to the Human Rights Commission and just saying, what do we do? Not mm -hmm. because I want to, to say, you know, you guys are the bad guys and you didn't offer this, because I want yeah. to create change mm -hmm. by way of policy so that when somebody with a disability enters a government office, they know that they don't have to bring somebody with them or they don't have to ask a friend. They know that the agents there will be, will be able to help them excessively and they won't have to worry and they can just get on with their day. It was good of you to come in and tell the story, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. I've been speaking with Andrew Gerza. He has a disability.
He is a disability awareness consultant in Toronto, and we should tell you that CBC News reached out to the Ministry of Immigration and Citizenship for their response, and that's the section of government, by the way, that issues passports, and we'll bring you their comments when we hear back from them.